On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Carl is going to show us a tool called Poly, which gives us the ability to handle transient errors caused by service outages. Yeah. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and on today's show, we're going to address the problem of services in the cloud that can go down, and what can you do to make your applications more resilient? And to do that, I asked my good friend, Mr. Carl Franklin, to join us to talk about a tool called Poly. Hey, Carl, how are you? Hey, how you doing? Welcome to the caves of Altamira. Hey, this is my wine cellar. welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. Carl, of course, is the co-host of the iconic and long-running .NET Rocks podcast. You were a guest in the 40s or something, right? When I was in my 40s? No, 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 no. show ago. number 40-something. I think <laughs> Episode you were number 43, if I recall yeah. correctly, December 15th, 2003, when I was the product manager for Visual Studio Tools for Office. Yeah. Yes. So now, 17 years later, I'm returning wow. the favor and having you on Toolbox. I appreciate it. Thanks. I, I wanted to wait until you were good at this you know, <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> so, Polly, editors. Yeah. Polly gives us resiliency, transient error handling. We're going to do this as two parts. We're going to do a shorter introduction. And then uh, in the second part, we'll dive into more detail. Right. Yeah. So, Polly is an interesting project that I noticed in the early 2000s. Um, or the mid 2000s, I suppose. But the whole idea with this is that uh, what happened to my thing? What happened to my thing, Robert? The whole idea with this is that um, you have services that are in the cloud that are talking to each other. It's a microservices world. We're just living in it, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so the the problem is when services go down that you're that you need to talk to, Right, and you're counting on them being there. What yep. do you do about that? I mean, it's one thing if you've got, um, you know, oh, uh, a, a, an application that's in the browser and your your Wi-Fi goes down, you get a 500, and people say they yeah. expect that. They're like, oh, well, my internet's down. I think I'll figure out what, why that happened, and I'll come back. Try and again come later. Back yeah. and try again, and everything's fine. But that doesn't happen um, in the cloud. So in the cloud, you've got these issues where uh, one microservice is talking to another one downstream, and it you know nothing goes through. You'd make an HTTP request, and nothing happens. And right. that could be for a number of reasons. One one reason is that there's an internet outage in the cloud that usually doesn't happen. But another reason is that the service is struggling. The service may be um under a heavy load you know the, the 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 person who configured that service may not have given enough resources in order to uh you know to to handle the the network load and so what happens is that if you're just like in a steady retry loop right you're just retrying 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 you're putting even more load on that struggling service right it's yeah. almost like a denial of service attack <laughs> that you didn't expect to get. And you're not making the users happy. You're not giving them any oh. useful information. They just think your app's terrible. Exactly. Exactly what happens. So so there are different scenarios. And um, I think Netflix did a really good job of, of managing this with a circuit breaker uh, pattern. And the circuit breaker is we're going to do a few retries and maybe we'll spread them out and we'll get... Mm -hmm. You know more time in between each retry but after a you know a minute or two we're just gonna stop right we're gonna stop sending requests yeah. it reminds me of that um old i love lucy episode where lucy and ethel were um taking strawberries off a conveyor yes. belt or something and trying to and they just kept coming too fast and they're like throwing stuff right. them in their mouth and stuff <laughs> right so that's well, Netflix. I mean, this happens occasionally. It'll try, it'll try, it'll spin, spin, spin. And then it says, We're having trouble playing this video. Right. Right. Which, yeah. yes, it's annoying, but at least it gives me the sense that um, they're going to stop trying. So I can either watch something else or I can try again. It's better than just leaving me hanging. 
Yeah, exactly. And, you know, Gmail is a really good example of this, right? If um, your Wi-Fi goes down while you're using Gmail, it says, oops, you know, at the top of it, it says, oops, uh, something happened. We're going to try again in 30 seconds and it counts right. down, right? But if you want to yeah. retry now, you can. You can push that button. So Polly well, gives us the ability to do that in our .NET apps? Yeah, Polly gives you the ability to create policies. And that's what Polly is really short for, policy. Yeah. To create policies that say, you know, we're going to retry three times and, and you know, we're going to wait first 200 milliseconds and then, you know, times 10, times 10, whatever. Maybe we'll do an exponential back off. And then maybe we'll stop. We'll do a circuit breaker. We'll just stop all requests from coming in. But this all happens at a policy level. So mm -hmm. you have an HTTP client that actually the, the poly mechanisms are built now into HTTP client factory and .NET Core. So it, essentially you can configure it all with a policy. And then you just make a call. And all the retries and stuff happen under the hood you don't even worry about it it just you just wait for the result to come back hmm, that sounds cool. cool how's it work yeah it's it's great so what i like to tell people the flip answer is poly is a giant wrapper around try catch mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it's good to think of it like that because you know we we tr we use try catch all the time but the problem is okay you've caught an error now what do you do right Right. And most people just, I mean, the classic problem is like we ship that off to the user and, or we log, you know, log the real exception details. And then we tell the user, uh, problem happened. Sorry. I don't know what to do. We'll just, yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe press this button. Right. So, so if you show my screen, I will show you the poly repository on GitHub. And this is the standard repository. And that look, look at how long this page is. I mean, the documentation is really good. And it shows you all the different kinds of policies and samples and stuff. But if there's also a different samples repo, oh, cool. that's what I'm going to show you here. Um, there's been a lot of work on poly over the years. And in fact, I, I just can I just mention some stats real quick? Sure. So we're getting almost 150,000 downloads of Poly every day. Wow. And the the it, it's definitely in the top 20 of uh, open source projects to be downloaded. But if you take out duplicates, like multiple X unit packages and Newton soft stuff, Poly is in the top 10. So wow. it's a very, very popular um, um a very popular framework. So this is the wiki right here. And the wiki is great if you want to keep up with, you know, the roadmap and, you know, where things are going and suggest suggest stuff. But I think we should just jump over to yeah. Let's some see code, how it works. right? Yeah. Let's see how it works. Yeah. So I've got, uh, there's, two pro uh, there's two parts to the project right here. There's a, a client application which is just a console app and we actually have this poly test app out uh, on azure if you want to use that but you can also use a local api and okay. the api project is actually running now this api project has a values controller right here it's very simple right you mm -hmm. pass you pass an id and it says response from server to request id so okay. it's basically easy for you to use as a measuring device. But if you look in app settings JSON, there are these rules where we have this throttling uh, engine that throttles based on a period of time and a, and a number of requests. So this essentially says that the first three requests within any, any five second interval will come through just fine. On the fourth request within five seconds, we're going to throw a 500 error. Mm, okay. All right. So that's just how we can test. Now, in the sample application, and this is in poly samples, got a bunch of async and synchronous demos. I'm going to use the async ones. So the first demo is no policy. In other words, this is, a, and all of these demos follow the same pattern. So you're going to see the same code pretty much except for the policy and maybe a little bit of, of stuff. Okay. 
So let's go back to the demo here and you'll see what we've got here. Um, we've got an execute async with a cancellation token. And we're reporting some progress. We're creating a new HTTP client. There's no policy here. There's no failback. So this is like a typical kind of application, right? You have a try catch. Mm -hmm. And in the try, we call this web API root API values and the total request, which is the number. And we'll display that. And if we get an exception, we'll report that. And then okay. we're going to wait, you know, half a second and we'll go back and continue doing this demo. And then it shows some statistics. So this is okay. the sort of pattern of these demos. So let me show you what happens with no error handling. And you can see the errors are in red, the good requests are in green. So one, th one, two, three within five seconds happen. And then these other ones through 10 don't, like this is what you'd expect, right? Right. Okay. When I press uh, Control C, we can close that. Now let's go to the next demo, which is a retry for n number of times. So this is the way that you create a policy in Poly. So here's the policy. We're handling a regular exception, and you can put in whatever exceptions you want, right? You mm. can list them out. And the policy name is retry async. So we're going to retry three times. Okay. Okay. There's no delay in between each retry. It's just going to retry three times. And by the way, these demos aren't, how shall I say, um, prescriptive. Like the, these aren't, hey, do it this way. We're showing you these demos to exercise the different policies so you can realize, you can understand what they do. Right. Okay. All right, so then we're reporting the progress. So now we have our HTTP client, and within the try, we do an await policy execute async with a lambda, and this is the code that we're going to execute within the context of the policy. All right, mm -hmm. and so, so this is this is essentially what happens. So we're we're calling, uh, you know, it's the same deal except that we're executing it within the context of the policy. And there you go. So let's try this. We're going to retry three times. And what happens is, boom, 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 too many requests. All right. Then we call again. We get an error. Boom, boom, boom. Those, those three in yellow are our retries. Okay. All right. So the first three go through. We do three retries right in a row. So that's what happens when you just do a retry what you really need to do is sort of wait in between each retry. And by the way, this right here, this code right here, this is essentially the exception handler. This is the code that executes when uh, a retry happens, mm -hmm. right? You get the exception in the attempt, and this is what is shown in yellow right here. All right, let's go to the next one. And you can tell me when we need to stop and save the rest for the next show. Okay. I'll leave that up to you. So this is wait and retry uh, a number of times, but wait is the key here. We're waiting in between each retry. And you can see those yellow guys are taking a little bit longer, all right, to execute. That's because, let me pull up this code right here. What we're doing is we're saying our policy has a wait and retry three times, but we're waiting 200 milliseconds between each try. Otherwise, this code is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So we're getting the same failures. We're, we just now have the ability to detect and do something about it. Is that right. correct? Yeah. And these different types of policies um, give you the ultimate flexibility. And I'll show you how you can stack them and, uh, you know, use them together. And that's where it really gets fun. Yeah. But we'll so get why, don't we, why don't we stop here? Um, okay. So we'd keep these nice and short. And in the next, uh, in the part two of this, in the second episode, we'll mm -hmm. keep looking at the, the samples and get a little more in depth. Sounds good. Um, but before we go, show me one thing. Show me how I hook this all up.
what do I need to add to my project? Oh. Is it a oh, library? It's so yeah, it's so easy. You just uh, install it via NuGet. Install oh, dash sure packet is. poly. Okay. Poly. Awesome. If you can remember poly, you can install NuGet package poly. That's it. All right. Excellent. So this would be a good place to, to stop. And in the next episode, we'll keep looking at this and see some additional scenarios. Thank you.